Yeah, so thanks again for the talk. Now, the third talk is, will be given by Cosimo Calò, a researcher in laser fabrication and photonic integration, and who is in charge of the electron beam lithography, lithography facility in the 3.5 lab in Palaiso, France. We, uh, he will talk about the hybrid 3.5 silicon nitride integration at the semiconductor platform perspective. So good morning, everybody. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer of this conference for the invitation, for the perfect organization. And, uh, and also would like to thank Michael for uh, having said already pretty much about many of the integration approach we can uh, use for uh, hybrid integration between 3.5 and uh, silicon nitride. Um, my talk will be a little bit out of topic because I will uh, not focus mostly on uh, silicon nitride, but mostly on uh, the um, integration approaches that we follow at uh, 35 Lab. Uh, but before uh, going into, uh, into the presentation, I would like first uh, to uh, present uh, 35 Lab to uh, those of you who, who don't know us. So 35 Lab is a private research lab, which is between uh, uh, Thales, Nokia, and uh, COLT. We uh, have around uh, 100 uh, permanent re researcher and uh, a variable number of PhD, but uh, typical number is around 20. It's a specific French uh, legal entity. Uh, the idea is to uh, share the fabrication means that uh, have a huge cost. Uh, in order to develop technologies that can uh, respond to the need of uh, the different uh, companies, so Thales, Nokia, and SEOA. Uh, we are uh, um, located in Palaiso, uh, close to Paris, and uh, uh, we actively collaborate with uh, LETI, which is located in uh, Grenoble, in this uh, well-known uh, silicon technology platform. Uh, our focus, uh, as the name can suggest, is uh, 3.5 material, so we target all the relevant 3.5 uh, materials for, uh, for the different markets. So in particular, uh, indium phosphide, uh, gallium arsenide, uh, but also antimonide uh, materials and uh, gallium nitride for uh, uh, power electronics. Uh, our approach is to increase the maturity level of the technologies until the uh, production can actually be transferred uh, to um, spin-off companies or to partners of our uh, mother companies. We can also demonstrate pilot line and uh, initial production uh, if uh, this is required before a transfer. And uh, we are actively uh, involved into um, uh, capturing uh, as much as, uh, as possible the IP for direct or indirect exploitation by our mother companies. Uh, our main goal is also to develop uh, key differentiators for our mother companies for, um, for use in the relevant application fields that are for Nokia, the uh, communication, uh, mostly 5G in these uh, in these recent years. For Thales, it's uh, defense, space, uh, and transportation, and uh, for uh, Leti is actually the exploitation for a volume uh, application. Uh, our facilities is uh, let's say uh, quite impressive in the sense we have uh, 2,000 square meter of uh, clean rooms, uh, several uh, epitaxy reactors such as. Uh, gas source and solid source MBE, uh, and uh, several uh, MOCVD reactors targeting uh, the different material uh, we, we target. So um, in terms of processing, we have uh, an e-beam, and uh, I'm happy to be in charge of this uh, important tool for fabrication. 
stepper and uh, several uh, uh, PCVD and uh, uh, dry etchers tool. Uh, we also have uh, uh, an important uh, laboratory for uh, electrical testing, uh, packaging in uh, small volumes, but also um, the aging of, of components in order to uh, do the whole uh, development cycle. So we have this uh, the good chance of uh, having everything integrated on the same site to fasten the uh, development cycle. So um, historically, uh, most of the focus uh, of our activity uh, regarding photonic integration was on the indium phosphide platform. Uh, the main reason is because you get excellent performance uh, and you can uh, implement all the functionalities, including, uh, of course, lasers, but also well, detector modulators uh, and so on. Uh, in recent years, uh, a significant part of our uh, research activity is also uh, moved towards the uh, silicon uh, platform and integration with, uh, with 3.5. Uh, for obvious reason, uh, you all know the uh, passive, uh, the, the small size for the passive uh, optical elements and the possibility of doing uh, wafer scale testing and, uh, and uh, using uh, mature, mature uh, manufacturing tools. Um, so, uh, the outline of uh, uh, the presentation is uh, the following. I will discuss essentially the um, uh, integration approaches we actually uh, follow at, uh, at Trifab Lab, focusing on, uh, well, uh, indium phosphide, so integration on the uh, IMP platform, uh, which for a long time has been uh, dedicated to custom development, but we uh, are uh, involved in a uh, in a pilot line uh, project uh, called Impulse to, to be able to build device on a generic platform. I will uh, talk about uh, some uh, relevant demonstrator on uh, hybrid uh, integration, meaning uh, uh, integration at the packaging level, uh, and photonic integration on the silicon platform. And uh, the main approach we, we, we follow is, well, heter heterogeneous integration, meaning uh, wafer and dye bonding. Um, another approach not cited uh, by, uh, by Michael, but it's something uh, which we believe is very promising for, uh, for many of the applications I will show, which is the epitaxial regrowth on a bon uh, bonded indium phosphide seed and uh, direct 3.5 epitaxy on, uh, on silicon. So over the years, uh, we have developed uh, several uh, fundamental building blocks uh, for uh, doing uh, photonic integrated circuits on indium phosphide. I can comment on uh, some of those. So the first one on the, on the left uh, is uh, called bad joint regrowth. And uh, it consists in, uh, well, uh, after you have etched, uh, after you have grown your AP, AP stack with, uh, for example, laser multi-quantum well, you etch uh, some portion of those and you do a, an epitaxial regrowth of a, uh, a different uh, active region, for example, a modulator. And uh, using uh, this technique, you can optimize separately different area of the component. Um, Another important uh, building block is, uh, well, the, uh, the, the grating uh, patterning and grating overgrowth. This is very important for uh, DFB laser. Uh, a nice, uh, very nice building block uh, on which we are uh, le leaders together with the, the Japanese is the selective area growth. This is uh, maybe not so well known. Is it consists in uh, well exploiting the selectivity of the uh, MOVP uh, epitaxy, uh, meaning that uh, the species in the, uh, in the MOVP reactor can diffuse over a dielectric mask uh, that is suitably patterned, and then in this way uh, you can have a growth enhancement uh, due to the presence of the mask that will allow to, uh, to have different uh, thickness for, uh, for the AP stack in different regions. 
So in this way, with one uh, epitaxial uh, growth, you can uh, do uh, passive uh, and uh, active regions uh, or target multiple wavelengths. Uh, so you can have a uh, broad, uh, broadband, uh, uh, for example, uh, amplifiers or uh, diff target different wavelengths for uh, your, la your lasers. Another core technology we develop at TriFive Lab is uh, the, uh, the semi-insulating barrier detail structure, which is a, actually a more complex process that uh, consists in uh, uh, up to three epitaxy. Uh, well, the epitaxy of the active region, then the patterning of uh, your uh, ridge component, and the growth of uh, semi-insulating uh, uh, indium phosphide, and then uh, a regrowth of uh, indium phosphide uh, doped uh, with uh, uh, of P-type. And in this way, you can have uh, high performance for modulators because you don't have uh, parasitic capacitance on the sides of your uh, ridge, for example. And uh, the same insulating uh, indium phosphide uh, allows, uh, well, to reduce the, the current leakage uh, and so maximize the, the efficiency of, uh, of the devices by injecting all the current into, into the active regions. Uh, all these building blocks, well, uh, depending on the component, some of those uh, are used. Uh, these are employed for uh, some of the uh, state-of-the-art uh, devices uh, that we, we do at Trifab Lab. I can mention uh, just a few. So uh, a very le relevant one is uh, ultra-wideband uh, semiconductor optical amplifiers uh, that have been uh, demonstrated in uh, recent years. Uh, exhibiting gain uh, bandwidth, 3D gain bandwidth as large as uh, 120 nanometers uh, with, uh, with good uh, noise factors. Um, EMLs for access network. Actually, this is a uh, well developed technology that, that has been uh, transferred for production to uh, Almae Technologies, which is now in the old uh, site of uh, 35 Lab, which is in uh, Marcusi. And we have also demonstrated the more complex uh, photonic integrated circuits. Uh, these are uh, BPSK and QPSK transmitters um, employing uh, switching of uh, predefined uh, optical phases. So some of these building blocks will, uh, will be, uh, let's say, uh, further studied. Uh, and uh, sold in a, in a pilot line uh, for indium phosphide uh, photonic integrated circuits in the project uh, Impulse. Uh, you can see the acronym here. It's a pilot line for uh, ensuring a low barrier for access and that self-sustained uh, peak ecosystem based on indium phosphide. And uh, the, the project is uh, coordinated by TU Eindhoven, Professor Kevin Williams. Uh, and the uh, three five responsible for that is my colleague uh, Giancarlo Cerulo. And the idea is to allow fabless business startups to uh, access uh, multi-project uh, wafer run uh, by providing them uh, a PDK with the building blocks uh, each foundry uh, uh, as developed, and this will be closed building blocks. So the uh, the, fa the fabless uh, businesses don't need to uh, uh, invest money in fabrication or uh, know anything about uh, fabrication and actual implementation of the devices. So uh, I'm happy to uh, to note that. Uh, some, many actually of the, uh, of the actors in, uh, in this Impulse Consortium are in this, uh, in this room. Uh, Trifab Lab here uh, enters as an as a Indian Phosphide Fab, and uh, we interact with the, the local company VLC, uh, and, uh, and yeah, with the software developers, uh, big designers, manufacturer, tester, and uh, the techno-economical analysis is very present in this, uh, in this project. The building blocks that we, uh, that we uh, are proud of is this semi-insulating barrier structure, 
uh, and uh, the fundamental building blocks that will be uh, part of this uh, impulse will be distributed uh, feedback laser, semiconductor optical amplifiers, spot size converter, and uh, electroabsorption modulators. And uh, by combining these building blocks, you can uh, build uh, a relatively large variety of, uh, of components. So the roadmap uh, at 35 Lab for, uh, for this project is uh, the following after uh, two uh, years of uh, technology adaptation, so validation of these building blocks and uh, compilation of a PDK, uh, the open access will be granted first in 2021 uh, to the uh, impulse uh, uh, companies who will validate the, um, uh, the pilot line and then uh, to external users. So stay tuned for uh, uh, following the, this, uh, this uh, pilot line project. So uh, a very relevant uh, integration uh, approach is uh, hybrid integration at the packaging level. So I will uh, present some uh, demonstrators uh, that we have recently uh, fabricated. So um, the first demonstrator you can, uh, it comes to mind when, uh, when talking about hybrid uh, integration at the packaging level is narrow line with laser. This uh, essentially typically consists of a gain chip uh, on 3.5 uh, and a passive uh, chip for example, on the silicon nitride platform, but it can be also uh, on the SOI platform, uh, with uh, a DBR or uh, ring resonators uh, in vernier configuration for mode, sele mode selection. And there have been many demonstrations by uh, several groups uh, on this approach. Why this is the first uh, configuration that, uh, that comes to mind? Because uh, the idea is to uh, increase the cavity length, having a high, uh, let's say, a low loss uh, passive extension uh, of the cavity in order to reduce the shallow tones uh, uh, line width uh, for, for lasers. Uh, which will depend by the, uh, by the intra-cavity uh, power uh, within, the, so within the laser cavity. Uh, the application are uh, many, so the coherent optical communication, uh, but especially LiDAR. Um, so the approach we have followed uh, at Trifa Lab is to, well, put together two optimized uh, photonic circuits, uh, an, uh, a reflective semiconductor optical amplifier. So this is a quantum well slab coupled optical waveguide amplifier uh, based on SIBH technology. Um, coupled with a, a lateral grating, a sidewall corrugation grating uh, DBR with a length of uh, nine millimeter. Uh, on a silicon nitride uh, platform with a very uh, thin uh, layer of silicon nitride, 90 nanometer, in order to have uh, a large mode size, no nonlinear effects, uh, and, uh, and uh, ultra low losses, which in this case are uh, around 10 dB per meter. Um, the, uh, the design of uh, this chip uh, includes uh, trenches, uh, so a suspended waveguide for thermal isolation, uh, and optical grade facet defined by lithography and uh, reactive ion etching. The performance uh, are shown here. So we have a threshold current of around 75 uh, milliamps, an output power uh, up to 12 uh, milliwatt and uh, side mode suppression ratio uh, in excess of uh, 60 dB uh, when uh, the laser operates in a single mode behavior. We have mode hopping due to uh, when, when we tune it uh, with the, the RSOA current whenever the fabri perot spectrum doesn't uh, exactly, uh, when, it's, when the, when the fabri perot spectrum is not exactly centered in the Bragg filter uh, transfer function. The uh, tuning characteristics can be made uh, more uh, continuous uh, by tuning at the same time the RSOA uh, current and the uh, 
by thermal tuning the uh, the passive and uh, the the tuning shown here is two nanometers uh, by uh, so tuning both both section and the laser line width is comparable to state of the art uh, although there have been some uh, some demonstration with ex showing uh, a narrow line width but uh, with longer dbr gratings or uh, with more complex design using uh, several uh, ring resonators in, uh, in vernier configuration. Uh, optical line width is uh, around five, uh, five kilohertz. Another uh, interesting application whenever you have a, a good silicon nitrate platform, uh, and in this case we refer to the uh, LAT platform is uh, is the generation of nonlinear uh, optical frequency combs. Uh, this is typically done with the uh, uh, external laser uh, with uh, uh, high power, so consuming a, a lot of uh, energy in order to pump uh, a nonlinear uh, ring resonator that will be able to generate a, a broad comb by uh, four way mixing, uh, degenerate and non degenerate four way mixing. Um, within within the, the ring, the application are uh, several uh, spectroscopy, but uh, also frequency uh, fre frequency measurement, optical clocks. The the idea is to exploit a good uh, laser uh, from Trifab Lab, and uh, in order to pump uh, these devices. So this is another example of uh, hybrid uh, integration by combining the best of the two worlds. For example, using a high power uh, DFB laser uh, with a relatively narrow line width of uh, 80 kilohertz in order to pump a high quality factor uh, ring resonator uh, uh, on, the, on the nitride platform uh, developed uh, at, uh, at Leti. The performance are uh, again comparable to the uh, to the state of the art, and in particular, if we refer to uh, recent publication at TPFL and uh, Columbia University, integrating uh, in, a, in a hybrid uh, fashion uh, um, three five uh, discrete devices like uh, a, a Fabri Perot laser uh, or a reflective SOA combined with a more complex uh, chip. Uh, we get uh, high, uh, a large bandwidth, uh, a, l a large comb up to 147 nanometer uh, using uh, smaller, smaller rings. So um, I will uh, take uh, well, uh, the, the, left, uh, the last part of this talk to discuss the approaches uh, we currently pursue uh, on uh, the silicon uh, platform. Uh, so heterogeneous integration is the first and most, uh, let's say, uh, it's not actually straightforward as you, as you have seen in the, in the previous talk, but this is actually the approach we, we pursue from uh, uh, a bit less than 10 years uh, on. And the, the idea is to do molecular bonding uh, of 3,5 uh, uh, wafers or 3,5 uh, dyes on, uh, on a silicon photonic uh, platform. This can be SOI, but it can also be silicon nitride. So uh, please take it, uh, this example as a general, uh, general examples. Uh, in uh, our silicon photonic group, we mostly focus on, uh, on uh, SOI. Uh, so we grow the wafers in the, uh, our 100 nanometer, uh, millimeter fab. Uh, uh, at the uh, Leti fab, which is 200 and 300 millimeter uh, wafer, uh, the SOI process is carried out. Then uh, the wafers are bonded, uh, and then uh, by laser cutting uh, on an on a 8 inch wafer, uh, we reconstitute a 4 inch wafer in order to process uh, 3 5, uh, three five uh, on, on silicon uh, on insulator uh, wafers in our uh, 100 millimeter fab. 
And here you see an example of a cross-section of a, a laser, a hybrid laser. The, the advantage of this approach is that, uh, well, you have a lot of uh, building blocks uh, available on the, on the SOI platform, and you can uh, have hybrid mode or transfer the mode with the uh, double tapers uh, um, as, as shown here. Some relevant demonstrators, uh, again, for this approach are uh, widely tunable lasers using uh, external cavity uh, made in, uh, in silicon. And uh, typical architecture is, uh, is the one shown here. And uh, by bonding optimized material uh, and uh, uh, allowing to have a large uh, wavelength tunability, we have demonstrated 90 nanometers uh, wavelength tunability uh, with a output power that can be as large as uh, 10 milliwatt with a threshold current of 30 milliamps. Uh, application uh, may be in the, uh, in the optical packet switching uh, in the C-band for WDM. Uh, however, uh, the tuning of those laser uh, was mostly based on uh, uh, thermal uh, tuning, uh, which has a low, uh, uh, a slow time constant in the mi microsecond uh, time scale. For some application, you may want to switch rapidly between, uh, for example, two wavelength. For example, in access network, uh, if you want to uh, address burst, burst mode and uh, rapidly switch channel. Uh, another uh, approach can be interesting, which is, for example, uh, employing uh, fast modulators uh, on the sil silicon insulator platform uh, based, for example, on a carrier inject injection, so the plasma dispersion effect, to uh, rapidly change the refractive index of the rings and tune the rings. And here in this, uh, in this demonstrator, uh, you can see that the switching time between two wavelengths uh, can be as low as uh, two nanoseconds. Another demonstrator is, uh, is uh, EMLs, uh, um, based on a single uh, epitaxial uh, layer. Uh, this, is, this has been done uh, using a 1.3 micron uh, AP layer. Um, so the laser exhibit good performances, uh, 45 dB uh, side mode suppression ratio. The electroabsorption modulator, which is based on the uh, same uh, active region, in fact is not optimized for this application because essentially the insertion losses will be, will be very large. Uh, we estimated uh, the insertion losses to be around 5, uh, 5 dB, uh, but still, uh, we could uh, measure eye diagram after 25 kilometers and uh, no penalty uh, with, a, um, with a dynamic extinction ratio as large as uh, 9 dB. Another uh, nice application is in, uh, on the receiver side, so uh, coherent receivers for uh, 100 gigabit per second uh, at 1.55. And the, uh, the bonding approach gives us the uh, flexibility to, in, uh, to include monolithically uh, a local oscillator. Uh, so here on this chip, measure, uh, which measures, uh, which has a footprint of two millimeters by 1.5 millimeter, uh, we have integrated uh, photo detectors and the local oscillators, and uh, the whole chip has a um, uh, taking into account the losses on the silicon uh, photonic platform, the whole uh, chip has a responsivity of 0 0.1 uh, ampere per watt, uh, where the photodiodes have a responsivity of 0 0.9 ampere per watt. The line width of the integrated laser uh, is around uh, 150 kHz at 1 milliwatt output power. Um, and uh, the phase error uh, that, was been, that was measured on the, this QPSK constellation was less uh, than uh, five degree, uh, which is compatible with the coherent receiver uh, approach. <laughs> Just uh, very quickly on the uh, two uh, other uh, integration, uh, photonic integration uh, approaches we follow. 
so uh, a very interesting uh, approach is uh, not bonding the whole uh, AP stack, but rather bonding uh, in an indium phosphide seed. And if the bonding is done, is done correctly, you can then uh, implement multiple uh, regrowth after uh, having bonded the, the indium phosphide seed. Uh, the goal behind is to transfer uh, all the building blocks that are mastered at 3.5 Labs, so SAG, uh, semi-insulated bioreceptor structure and uh, budget regrowth on, uh, on uh, silicon. So, um, first, uh, first sample uh, have been, uh, have been uh, realized in uh, using the, the fabrication process that is shown uh, on the left. So first, the, uh, um, uh, there is this MOVP regrowth on indium phosphide substrate uh, using an indium gallium arsenide uh, sacrificial layer. This is uh, directly bonded by molecular bonding on, uh, on silicon uh, substrate, which is thermally oxidized, so which has a, uh, around 700 nanometer uh, thick uh, layer of silicon oxide. Then we do substrate removal, and then uh, we do MOVP regrowth of the active stack. In order to validate this approach, we uh, we use uh, we compare uh, reference uh, quantum well grown on indium phosphide, and this approach that we called uh, impo C uh, as indium phosphide on silicon, and uh, regrowth typical regrowth is on the order of 400 nanometer. You can see here uh, STEM and TEM uh, images of the uh, regrowth on top of this uh, bonded seed and uh, the quality of uh, the quantum wells with the sharp transition. Um, another uh, possibility that we have uh, in our MOVP re reactor is the possibility to measure in situ uh, the curvature of the wafer to estimate the, the thermal strain uh, during the, the growth. This uh, allowed to deduce a critical thickness that is between 450 to 950 nanometer. Uh, but in fact, we, we will show soon that uh, this limit can be overcome and uh, the validation uh, on the components is ongoing. So uh, this work on growth is, was presented in uh, Compound Semiconductor Week. So you will find a paper on physical solidity from Claire Besançon and uh, demonstration will, uh, will come soon using uh, this interesting approach. Uh, another, uh, so the holy grail of uh, photonic integration on silicon is direct epitaxy. Unfortunately, 3 Lab is not equipped for doing uh, direct epitaxy on silicon because this requires a reactor which can reach very high temperature in, in excess of uh, 1,000 degrees. Uh, but we, we stay tuned, we do technology watch, and uh, we tackle the, the integration problem in a direct growth scenario by uh, participating to the Moikana project, which is a three-year project coordinated by the University of uh, Thessaloniki with Legion Tech, uh, VLC, and, uh, uh, and University of Kassel, who, who does growth on silicon. And the main task is to, in fact, develop uh, an optical transition between uh, the, uh, the indium phosphide uh, monolithically uh, grown on, on silicon and the silicon nitride platform of uh, Legion Tech. The idea is to use an amorphous uh, silicon uh, interposer and uh, the integration process is not uh, so straightforward. Uh, so we had to develop uh, a process for that. And in particular, uh, the approach was to develop an, uh, an amorphous silicon-like material called uh, silicon-rich uh, nitride de deposited by PCVD and uh, with uh, an index, a refractive index, that is close to indium phosphide in order to uh, reduce as much as possible the parasitic reflection. 
uh, this material coupled with good uh, designs for the, the interposer would allow to transfer the mode between indium phosphide and uh, silicon nitride. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have uh, propagation losses that are very high on the order of 14, 15 dB per centimeter, but these are still compatible with the, uh, with the scope of the project because this transition between the two materials will be uh, very short, uh, on the order of uh, 100 uh, micron. First, prototypes of the interface have, uh, have been uh, fabricated and the fabrication of, uh, on actual laser structure is ongoing for validating the approach. You can see here uh, uh, an SCM picture of uh, a, dummy, uh, um, a dummy structure for the interface. So uh, to conclude and summarize, uh, so there are several integration, uh, uh, photonic integration approaches that are, are, are available out there. And uh, I showed uh, those that are actually explored at Trifab Lab. Uh, my personal view is that uh, photonic integration on indium phosphide is to be preferred, uh, especially whenever high component performances are desired, especially high, high output power or low threshold for the lasers. And this is especially true when, uh, when you can uh, target small sized photonic integrated circuits, because uh, as, we, as we all know, the uh, the um, passive in indium phosphide tend to be quite bulky, and so uh, for for passive uh, you better uh, use uh, other uh, platforms such as uh, SOI or uh, silicon nitride. So that's where hybrid integration come uh, come to play. So this allows to combine the best of, uh, of the two worlds, so the best of indium phosphide components and uh, the, the selective uh, the selected passives. The price you have to pay is that the integration has to be done at the packaging level, which may increase the cost. And uh, actually, this has, this has to be planned in advance, especially. Uh, in the sense that uh, the mode field diameters of the two parts have to be uh, carefully, carefully matched, uh, otherwise uh, you may end up uh, uh, wanting to integrate discrete optics in your package, uh, increasing the complexity. So heterogeneous integration uh, is a very interesting approach because it allows a truly monolithic integration. But there are a few drawbacks, so it's not that uh, easy to uh, have it uh, working uh, properly unless you do uh, gluing. Uh, so molecular bonding is actually quite challenging, as, uh, as Michael has shown before. And uh, when, once you have it done, uh, you need dedicated infrastructure for processing uh, well, uh, the bonded uh, 3.5 on, uh, on silicon, you, can, uh, you cannot just uh, uh, do this in uh, process wafers in the CMOS uh, foundry. Uh, this is mostly limited by the 3.5 uh, wafer size, uh, although you can bond uh, dye, uh, uh, 3.5 dyes, and its sinking may be compromised because you have uh, a thick silicon oxide layer uh, between uh, silicon and, uh, and 3.5, so uh, its dissipation through the substrate may be, may be complex. Uh, an interesting approach is the regrowth on the bonded seed, seed which enhances, uh, let's say, the, uh, the heterogeneous integration and that allows multiple uh, regrowth. Uh, there are much like the very same drawbacks of the previous uh, heterogeneous integration, uh, and uh, the bonding and the, the regrowth are critical step, and the total height uh, has to be uh, managed. The direct regrowth on silicon is the oligral because it allows monolithic uh, integration and no wafer size limitation. However, it's really challenging, and uh, also assuming you have this done. Uh, the integration of uh, actives with passives is not straightforward, and this has to be, I mean, seriously be, be proven. Um, so at the moment, there are no, no real uh, lasers that can be really compared, uh, lasers directly grown on, uh, on silicon that can be really compared on, 
on uh, homologous devices on, uh, on the 3.5 substrate. With this, I would like to, well, thank you for your attention and, uh, uh, and well, before concluding, uh, actually, I make an, an advertisement for, uh, for my colleague who, will, uh, who is guest editor for uh, Applied Science, uh, a special issue uh, on hybrid and heterogeneous integration on photonic circuits. Uh, and so you're most welcome to uh, submit your, uh, your work. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cosimo, for your talk. Uh, because we are a little, a little bit over a schedule, so I encourage you, if you have any comment or question for Cosimo, they, they can be discussed during the, during the break. And then we now...